there are two things that I really want us to take away from the discussions that will cut across the different exercises that we do and the different documents that we look at, okay? The first one is around public, what, I want, want to, what I'll call justifications or public justifications, which is the idea that when we are making choices about budgets and how to spend and use money, public money, we have to provide public justifications for those choices, okay? And when I say public justifications, I don't mean justifications from the public. I mean justifications which are public. So when we talk about justifications which are public, it means that for every choice which is made in a document, there must be a publicly available reason for those choices. The second is around choices and priorities, okay? And one of the things that I want us to keep thinking about is what do we mean when we talk about a priority or when we say that we have made a choice? Every choice implies that we did not do something else. So it is not possible, therefore, for us to make a choice to do everything. That is never possible in public finance because we never have unlimited resources. So we are always choosing to do one thing instead of something else. So can somebody tell me from what you read and what you understood, what is this article about? When you talk of priorities, like uh, county, uh, like health is one of the functions of the county government. So we anticipate or we not even anticipate, we, we strongly believe that the responsibility of the county government to set aside, allocate reasonable amount of money for that particular sector. But in this case, you know, 30 counties spending less on health, actually to me that one is a misplaced priority. So it's about choices and priorities. So what we are actually comparing here is how much a county is spending on its development budget in 2013-14 compared to how much the national government was spending on the capital budget in 2012-2013, okay? But we are not saying anything about how much they are spending on other services, salaries, etc. right? That is clear, okay? So the first comparison is between the current year and the previous year. So that is a good comparison, but is it possible to tell whether a budget is meeting the needs of the public by looking only at the development budget? You may have the infrastructure in place, but if you don't have the personnel, if you don't have the drugs, if you don't have the, the, the support systems within a facility, then that need will not be addressed. So the two should be hand in hand. This article looks only at the development budget and then tries to draw a conclusion about whether the budget is meeting the needs. We are assuming that all counties need similar levels of capital investment. But well, that's not true. We know that that's not true. Some counties have much better infrastructure. Some counties have much worse infrastructure. So the choice that counties will make about whether to spend more on recurrent or more on capital in any given sector, that is a choice for the counties, right? There's another challenge, though, when we look at the development budget and we compare it year over year versus the recurrent side of the budget. Are, there, are those the same? You know, when you talk about development, there are times that uh, you have developed your needs up to a certain level. Uh, sometimes there's new thinking or new technology, so you might find your development budget really varying. Uh, on the recurrent side, in most instances, it will move. You know, it will be a graph that's moving up. You're employing uh, more staff you're buying uh, more medicine if it was a health budget, you know. So it will continuously be going up. So I think as you compare them, sometimes you may spend less on the development budget, year in, year out, sometimes it's more. But uh, as for the other side of the budget, in most cases it will be a steady graph that's climbing. So what happens with the two sides of the budget is that they are quite different because the capital budget is quite linked to projects. And projects have life cycles. They start and they end. So over time, you may need to invest a lot, and then it comes down. 
So it has this nature, capital investment has this nature that it goes up and down with projects. So in any given year, if your capital budget is coming down or your development budget is coming down, it is not necessarily a problem. It could be, but it is not necessarily. It may just be the end of a project cycle. A big expensive project or a set of expensive projects were finished and now you are moving some of that money into recurrent. On the recurrent side though, as you rightly say, Quite a bit of that money goes into salaries. Some goes into drugs. We're stay, staying with the health sector. If I decide to slash it from one year to the next, generally speaking, it means that I'm firing health workers and we are not going to have drugs. There's no, there's no way to, to square that circle, okay? So generally speaking, recurrent expenditures tend to be more stable. So I want us to wrap up this discussion of the article. There's more that we could say but, uh, and, and, and move us into the next session. But what I want us to take away from this are a few things, okay? The first is that it is critical that we think about both the recurrent and the capital side of the budget when we think about any sector and that we think about the differences between those two types of spending. The, the second thing I want us to take away is the value of comparison, value in comparing across counties, value in comparing across time, but we have to be careful how we do those comparisons. So as we go into the f subsequent sessions, let's keep these ideas in mind as we think about how to assess the budgets, how to assess priorities, and, uh, and so forth.